very interesting how people follow patterns. See, she doesn't feel safe with you either, Michael. And Karen needs to feel protected from when those coyotes come charging out of the brush. You listen to me. You stay the fuck away from her. <laughs> Assaulting a police officer? A nice civilized man like you, Michael? What are you gonna do? Arrest me? Arrest you? I could kill you. Everyone, this is Pico Entertainment and we are back again and here now we have another video for you and this will be a recent review request asking me to take a look back on a suspenseful adult thriller unlawful entry. Released on June 26th 1992, it stars Kurt Russell, Madeline Stowe and Ray Liotta and it was directed by Jonathan Kaplan. Now the story of unlawful entry is set within present day Los Angeles with happy very rich married couple Michael and Karen Cup. One night they come under attack from a burglar who eventually leaves without harming them physically but obviously very terrified and on guard they report the crime to the police and look to enhance the security of their house now initially police officer pete davis helps them out with installing the security system and the cars show their appreciation by inviting him to dinner and pete initially builds a good friendship with michael taking him on little tours around the city showing him how exactly the police do their job eventually pete locates the burglar and offers Michael the chance to exhibit his revenge but when Michael refuses Pete goes on to violently beat down the burglar and being scared by Pete's sudden change in nature Michael decides to keep his distance from him but Pete continues to interfere in his life building an unrelenting obsession with Karen he becomes psychologically unhinged and takes steps to basically separate the couple both Michael and Karen find themselves under constant attack from Pete's presence and eventually find themselves in the fight for survival. Now when looking back at Unlawful for Entry, it's overall a very solid suspenseful thriller with enough moments of tension and suspense to stay compelling all the way through. But to be honest, it's a story that we've seen so many times, the setup of a happily married couple being terrorised by an obsessive individual has been done to death for the last 20 to 30 years. The movie itself followed a long line of mainstream thrillers around the story such as the likes of Fatal Attraction, Pacific Heights and The Hand That Rocks the Cradle. So in one sense the familiar story does make the movie have a predictability about it, we get the usual build up and escalation and the movie pulls off these elements just fine. Both Kurt Russell and Madeline Stone perform adequately in somewhat limited roles especially for someone as so first to tell us Kurt Russell where the role here isn't really worthy of his talent in my opinion, it's just really a standard formulaic role of the overprotective stubborn husband. He does what he can within this role but overall it's nothing truly special or stand out when you consider the previous roles that he's had throughout his career. But without question what elevates this movie is Ray Liotta, sadly recently passed away, I've always stated that he was an underrated actor capable of drawing you to the story with such vivid intensity. And his performance here very much embodies those qualities in a role as pete in the beginning he's very charming and charismatic maybe even slightly empathetic as we get early scenes where he talks to michael and karen about the lonely life of a cop and what the movie does so well is to steadily reveal pete's psychotic nature there is an interesting question to be had here as to what exactly triggers his shift into the far more crazy lunatic that we see him become later on this is a character who seemingly is together mentally, he isn't an out and out psychopath and that's what makes him a bit more interesting. Is this change down to someone who just wanted some attention, some friends, some affection? Is the behaviour a result of being alone for so long and then once he receives some interaction he's not used to it and not prepared and therefore reacts to it in the wrong way? The fact that we have no previous backstory or any mental condition or traumatic childhood that's referred to leaves somewhat of a mystery so we're left to assume that this is the pure obsession over Karen that sends him over the edge. Regardless of which way you look at it, Ray Liotta is completely convincing in all aspects of the character, he's scary, unpredictable, smart, imposing and this performance is great all the way through and again another sign of what a great actor he was 
and that his profile really should have hit the same heights as the likes of Al Pacino and Robert De Niro following his breakthrough role in Goodfellas. But perhaps he didn't overall choose the scripts or get the right scripts that were truly worthy to showcase his overall talent. So when we go on to the movie's overall release, and it was somewhat of a small success, grossing $57.1 million from a $23 million budget. And really when we look back on Unlawful Entry, it's not a film that gets really talked about when we look back on that era of more adult contemporary thrillers. And to be honest, it's not really that surprising because again of the formula that it sticks to, and there's no real standout scenes or memorable or quotable dialogue. It plays pretty much by the numbers. Nothing too sensationalistic in terms of its commentary or too graphic in terms of its violence. And whilst I wouldn't put it in the upper echelon of early 90s adult thrillers, I still think an outstanding term from Ray Liotta still makes Unlawful Entry a pretty solid and compelling thriller to watch many, many years after its overall release. So those are my overall thoughts and feelings and look back on Unlawful Entry. Let me know what you think in the comments below. Where do you think it ranks in terms of the careers of both Kurt Russell and Ray Liotta? And also the hierarchy of adult thrillers that we would see early to mid 90s. Do you think it's right up there? And do you think it's one of the best performances within Ray Liotta's career? Let me know what you think in the comments. And if you have any other further movies or television series or any other topics of any entertainment and pop culture scene that you'd like to see me cover, then also let me know in the comments and I will see if I will cover that commentary for you on the channel within the future. Please also hit and like the subscription and notification buttons so I can provide you more high quality content like this in the future. But that's it for now. Take care of yourselves and I will see you very, very soon.